Here's the thing, I'm a boss. I'm not gonna take anybody's medicine, I'm gonna make my own. I'm not gonna just trust anybody to give me vitamins. I'm gonna make my own vitamins. I'm gonna make sure they're healthy. If it works for me, it could work for you. Gas supplements. I am about to rock your world. Babe, you know you can't handle all of this without your sword. I swear this never happens. I guess I'll just text Lance a lot. He never has this problem. No, I am King Arthur. I was worthy of Excalibur, and I'm worthy of sword vitality! Now that is a sword fit for a king. But do you know how to use it? Become a better man with sword vitality. Alright y'all, welcome back to another episode of That's Fucked Up. It just so happens to be the 23rd episode, <laughs> the GOAT episode. We have two legends in the house. Two GOATs. We got Sharon Barber and we got Dame Dash with us in here that today. motherfucker. <laughs> Everybody give it up, give it up for the legends. Dame, What's happening? quick question for you. Yeah. Your uh, Instagram, yes. it, you go by uh, Dusko Poppington, right? That's right. how you say it? Yeah. All right, so what's the story behind that? I always wondered, like, yeah. why he did, why is that his Instagram name, and where does it come from? Well, the way I look at it, it's more for my company, from my point of view. And I have, like, a lot of verticals. But initially, like, when you first hear social media, it's pro it programs you to only look at it for social as opposed to for business. So, like, as an adult... And hearing about social media, I was anti-social media because just because of the name, not understanding the power of the distribution of it all. So when I first got there, I didn't. I wanted to like kind of be like destination. I, I thought it was uncool to be looking for attention. I wanted people to be looking for me. So I kind of put Dusko Poppington and I had a picture of my dog up for the first five years. And like the first year, people weren't <laughs> sh people weren't sure if it was me, but I was putting up personal stuff. Right. Anybody, is this Dame? Is this Dame? And I wasn't putting pictures of Mia in like the first. And who put me up on like Instagram? They gonna they gonna know where you're going. Uh, right. who, put you, who put me up on Instagram was Cameron. So, you know, I got I actually got the moment on film. We went to like Bergdorf Goodman or some shit, and he was like, "Yo, you better get up on this Instagram." Shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was showing me, and then he like we he posted something, and he's and I was like, "All right, like I." The one thing I do with people that are younger than me is I listen to them blindly, you know, because I always never want to be that person that just because I don't understand it means that I have, I don't see any value in it. You know, I'm not on the concrete anymore. Right. And I remember being younger, trying to pull older people's coat to shit. And I'd be like, even when I try to talk to people about Instagram, they'd be like, I ain't doing that. I'm like, yo, that's distribution. Right. You know, and once I saw it like that, then I understood the power of it. And even with TikTok, like I put my daughter on it when it was musically, First, because I like the editing of it, but I didn't look at it like distribution for me. I thought it was some kid shit. So your brain, they, but I'm, and the, the words will turn you off and make you think it's something it's not. And that's intentional, I think. So anyway, that's why it was Dusko Poppington. Now, the reason why it's Dusko is because the spy that um, James Bond is inspired or comes from, uh, Ever Flynn wrote about, was inspired by Dusko Popoff. And there's like... I saw a doc one, one, one morning about him, and he was really that dude. Like, girls loved him and shit. Mm -hmm. He knew about Pearl Harbor, and they, uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover ran him out of the town because he had two girls with him and shit. You know right. what I mean? So I was like, oh, already, I was like, all right, I'm Dusko Popoff. And then when, um, you know, I was telling my crew, at, at the time I had DD-172, a gallery in Tribeca, uh, the person that was doing graphics, David, uh, damn, I just forgot his last name. But anyway, he was like, yo, call these little Chinese dude. No disrespect to anything. I don't want to get canceled or whatever. But, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know what to say these days. I'm 50. That's what we say on this but, podcast. But dang, how can, still, how can you get canceled? You own everything you do. Yeah, that was It's impossible. That was more of a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so, so uh, you know, plus it wasn't nothing offensive. But um, he was like, nah, call it uh, Dusko Poppington. But what I didn't realize is that Huddy was, used to say that from Harlem. So I just thought it was cool, and that, that's what I did at Dusko Poppington. But years later, I had heard it, and it was after Huddy had, had passed. I mean, um, how do you, uh, yeah, right. How do you say that? Yeah, I want to make sure I was saying the right name. I'm a little high. Um, but uh, it was a Harlem thing, you know, and then I called Cam, and I was like, that's what was saying used to say. He was like, yeah, they, they was talking shit about it, but I, I didn't want to bother you with this bullshit. And I was like, oh, shit. So I immediately gave props, but it was a Harlem thing, the Poppington okay. thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so... You know, that was my name. And, uh, yeah, so I just was trying to be cool about shit. You know what I mean? And then, like, years later, they were like, you got to put your picture up there. <laughs> but, but but now that, it, it, like, I'm, I'm, you know, that's the law. I'm always getting lawsuits. <laughs> shit, it's, like, ridiculous. That that Instagram has caused me a lot of fucking lawsuits. Damn. Damn. And that's fucked up. Because I thought there was freedom of speech. See, that is fucked up. You know, people do use certain Like, things. real lawsuits? They went all what? the way? All, all those lawsuits? Yeah. Like, like all the lawsuits that I've lost lately were from, um, what you call it? Um, copyright infringement? No, nah, it wasn't copyright infringement. Defamation. Defamation of character? Like, if somebody will rob me and I talk about... Like, when the girl... That, remember that girl? And again, you know what's fucked up? When the girl accused me of, of, of sexually assaulting her because I, I caught her trying to steal out my house... Um, the press was all over it. New York Times, or, you know, uh, fucking ev everybody. And then when I went through the trial and beat it down, and it got, you know, I beat it ridiculous, then um, no one talked about it. No one wants to write about it. And that's fucked up. But I already know that program. You know, if I don't say nothing about the good shit about me, they'll just say stuff about the bad stuff and no one would know. Right. You know? And you know what's fucked up? We did lose on one part of that. And that was the defamation because when I put it up, I said that she robbed me. But in my brain, she did rob me. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I can't say that someone robbed me when they tried to rob me. Oh, okay. You know what I'm I saying? It. But it was I like, they was like robbed. That means that she, came, like, they, they like broke it down a certain way. And I was like, all right. But it was so little, minuscule, that, right. it, you know, it was a joke. They were trying to make it $100 million. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. The, and then also with the people that, you know, took my movie that I directed and said that they directed it, you know, again, it was a defamation because I said something about it and that's what they look at. You know what I mean? Like certain people, that's their job is to just look at little catty ways and they're usually from my culture, you know, which is crazy. That's wild. And that's fucked up. Man, you should put the dog back up. Stop getting sued. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> It now they know it's you, though. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? It's like now I just have to be. And and you know what's really fucked up is all the things that I posted on Instagram. I would ask my lawyer if it was legal. And Everything. Like, yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. I was be posting wild shit. Nobody ever said anything to me. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's about people proving that either you had malice when you did it, and that if and, and or that it messed up some money. So you have to prove that it messed up money. But then there's like. If you get caught up with the uh, the malice part, because I'd be like, yeah, the, I, you know what I mean. Like I'd be like, of course, I, I, I was angry when I put that shit up, and my intention was to show my part of the story for the narrative. But a lot of times, you might get it with a jury that, like in New York, I would get juries because you know the people that are fucking with me. This dude, uh, I don't want to say his name. I don't feel like having another lawsuit. But um, the dude, the lawyer that keeps fucking with me. He has like four, I went through four trials this year, year with the same guy, but he That's lost wild. the last one. So you know, we'll have to. <laughs> you know, the, the, and that's all I was waiting for him to do was lose one. Right. You know what I mean, and that was the one I really needed him to lose. And another thing, like he harasses Raquel, like he, you know, so, damn. Mm -hmm. And it's never for me the things that happen with me, which is fucked up, is it's never like a natural organic thing where things get like fucked up for me. You know, what I mean, it's always like a group of men from my culture, like a Steve Stout that'll get with a Leo Cohen and then go holler at a Jay-Z and then go, you know, and tell people like, yo, if you've messed with him, then you can't mess with me. 
and it's like a real conspiracy. And the reason why I know it, like I would hear about it, but like as soon as I get and step to niggas, like if I see Steve Stout, he throws everybody under the bus and tells me everything. So I'd be like, yo, what was that all about? <laughs> that was Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying? He'd be like, yo, you know, that was Lior and them. And then when I go see, like, uh, I'll, you know, step, see L.A. Reid, and be like, yo, what was all that shit about in the paper? That was Steve Stout who put that in the paper, saying, because, you know, there was a moment in time when it was like, it was in the paper that me and homie was beefing, and I was like, I'm not beefing with him. Why, who keeps putting that in the paper? Right. But then when I was telling homie, I was like, why are you not straightening that out? Well, it just adds fuel to the fire. I was like, yeah, all right. So, well, you know what I mean? He had somebody doing his dirty work. But now that I know, there was an actual, like, you know, I saw it on, uh, well, Dave May sent it to me, like a clip of Un saying that, you know, there was a plan to get me out of there. Like, he was going to get people conspire to fuck with me. You know, and, and, and the reason why, he's butthurt because I smacked the shit out of him. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. Everyone that, like, has a reason to get at me because we had some man shit and they lost on some man <laughs> shit, they go do some, like, you know, underhanded to me like girl shit. No dis and I don't even want to disrespect girls because this shit is like lower than bullshit. Right. So there's always some degree of a conspiracy against me. So like if you notice like at BET, like I didn't even get invited to anything. Like I don't know if I would have went, but it's like, yo, it's hip hop. How y'all don't invite Dame Dash? Right. And then people in BET be like, yo, why did I invite you? And they be like, well, when they ask the person like a that that runs it, they'll be like, oh well, you know, he still has beef with Jay and da da da. And I'd be like, this shit was like 30 years ago. What the fuck are y'all talking? I never had a beef with Jay. I just want to get the fuck away. Right. You know, like you sell companies and you don't have to continue to do that with people. But, you know, in another culture, you sell a company, whether it was a bad or good thing, you, you, you celebrate, you know, and then you go and sell another company regardless. And sometimes people do bullshit because people sometimes are from different places. So their morals are different. So you feel like Jay and some of the other people from your past still got some bitterness? 3,000%. They, they all be on some bullshit. I'm, I, 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 I'm saying it because I hear it. Right. So the, the the bottom line is it didn't bother me for a while because I was out doing artsy shit, like opening up God. art galleries and blah, blah, blah. But when I have a movie out and I'm trying to put it on BET or I'm trying to get it distributed and I'm hearing that bullshit, I'm like, damn, y'all really was butt hurt. Like, it was, I didn't know it was like that. Like that. You know, you hear about shit, but I didn't know it was that concrete. So when somebody says it in an interview, how can I, and, and then somebody sends it to me to trigger me, of course I'm going to be bothered about it. Like, I had to call my therapist about that shit. Right. Like, I'm like, yo, this shit is making me think, like, different ways about how to approach things, and then one of those <laughs> ways are very dark. You know right. what I'm saying? And I'm like, I don't want to think like that, because I ain't going to do nothing. So I'm like, what can I do? I don't want to internalize that shit, but this shit is pissing me off. But, you know, I'll deal with it. And this is fucked up. Is it going to help or hurt you with the new... Uh Purchase BT and VH1 Tyler Perry. was just bought by Tyler Perry. You just real quick, gonna, let me ask you a question. Get... You guys are smart guys, right? Did you read that in the Wall I'm, Street? I'm much smarter. Just let me than just him. finish. Let me finish. <laughs> Did you read that in the Wall Street Journal? I don't know. Definitely you, not. You heard it on TikTok or something? Some... Did you read it in the New York Times? We all know that I'm like a Did top you, reader. I'm just asking. Did you read, just it? read the top? <laughs> I'm just articles, articles, I'm just then asking. Then I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Scrolling. No, I think it was Instagram actually. He's a Facebook guy. I'm just asking. Scrolling through shit. You're not gonna let me on it. Did you read it in the New York Times? Mm, definitely not. So I wouldn't go with that narrative until you read it officially in a trade magazine or something like that. I wouldn't go with the TikTok. Oh, okay. Mark. So it ain't happening right. yet. Well, did you hear it come out of his mouth? No. Oh, okay. He so definitely... That, yeah, that's, so that's, that's what fair. I, that's why I don't talk about other cats' business based on what I heard because I never really know if it's true. And sometimes you can make yourself look silly, you know, in the future. If you get stand 10 toes on something, that's a rumor. So you don't want to stand on that unless you read it someplace. And that's how I approach things. Like, if I read it in the Forbes, I don't believe it. But if it's like the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times, places where they're known for being valid, Credible. then I believe it. But if I first hear it on TikTok, I don't, I don't go with it. Okay. I, could con I know how to control the algorithm, so anybody can. You understand what I'm saying? So if somebody wants a narrative out there, you can make an announcement and pay to have that shit with them bots just repost that shit all day. And if you look at where you're getting your information from TikTok, it's usually you go back, it's a bot. You know, meaning it was bought. I'm not very good with TikTok, but it was probably so maybe Instagram or something. <laughs> I think it was Facebook. <laughs> TikTok. Yeah, you are but Facebook. All, but all those different... But I'm, saying that I'm saying they're all... Because lately I've been on TikTok because I was trying to learn this yeah. shit. And I was like, what's the Chinese doing? And I understand what they're doing. They're pushing, you know, the bullshit. Like, there's things on my feed. Definitely. I'm like, I'm fucking to 52. I don't want to see what Didi Osama's doing, but I don't mind now that I know. You know, but I'm very... I'm like, it makes you knowledgeable about shit that was, like, damaging or, like, traumatizing to me when I was young. You know, like, it's like, damn, they really push a lot of violence. 
You know, even though they don't show the actual hits, they talk about the narrative of us hurting each other a lot. There's a lot of interviews of people of like glorifying things that they did that wasn't beneficial to our culture. And that's fucked up. So I understand the Korean thing, like, or China, you know, they're pushing the wrong fucking algorithms and we should have our own. But even if we have our own, they're still going to push an algorithm that controls us. And that's fucked up. So what I know is that, you know, when Cam and Mace was beefing, it's good that they're together now. When Mace did a diss record, YouTube gave Cam money to, to respond. Now, what if that turned into somebody getting killed? Mm. Mm. You know, and they can control algorithms. So there's certain things they won't play. But when it comes to us hurting each other, they will play. And that's fucked up. Absolutely. So back in the day, um, when you and Jay-Z first met, where how'd you guys actually become friends? Because um, he had, you know, he was trying to get, like, he didn't, he was, like, hustling and shit. And uh, Clark was, like, told me about him, and we met. And, uh, you know, what I was able to do was refine his hustle as well. But, you know... It was like through that we became friends through the, the, the things he was doing off, you mm-hmm. know, and then also because of what we were doing because I put him on a single with Original Flavor, so we were all touring in a Pathfinder, a four door Pathfinder, which was mine. And I got teased for it because I didn't have a um, a ski rack on it, so Jay bought it from me. He didn't care, and <laughs> and he didn't. He's like, I don't give a fuck, and uh, you know. The rest was history. You know, we just had a lot through, like, like through the touring and doing. Because the, the bottom line is, when people aren't fucking with you, like when you can't get a corporate check, you have to only eat off the land, right? Which is how I eat now. I don't get corporate checks. That that shit's been shut down for me for about twenty years. I have to live off the land. Like I have to make a product, and people have to buy it, or I have to be very strategic about it. And then I'm like a serial entrepreneur, so I have ten verticals that I fund all myself. Right. So I'm I'm never ever able to look at money. You know mm. what I mean? But I'm always ahead of industry because I'm looking for freedom and you know when you're ahead of industry then people aren't ready to do certain things. So I've been having streaming services since 2005. I was put I had television networks with Creative Control Kudi and Shike with DD172 in 2005. Wow. But that was before YouTube was even monetizing YouTube. They weren't even running commercials back then. So I'm always first, like, you know, I sold vodka first, like, you know, Puff and I have had conversations like, yo, why do I inspire you so heavy, bro? You know what I'm saying? You're like, I'm not, you know, I do a good job. I'm like, you do. I just don't raise money. I'm not the corporate guy. I just have to flip. I only depend on my hustling skills. It's not like a big, brilliant thing, but I don't focus on one thing because I'm good at so many things. Like, I'm nuts with it. Like, I'm insane. You know what I mean? So it's like... This week it was putting out a theatrical that I directed, scored, and, you know, did all of this shit with it, and then distributed it myself. And then now, you know, the next the next day what I'm doing is mixing a project that with Freeway that's coming out in October, and then I got to launch my, the, the, the streaming service, and then I got to put out the sneakers, and then I got to put out, you know, the, the hair, and then we got the vitamins and all. And you see my crew was just us. Right. But we're inspired, and we see opportunity, and we just, you know, it's, if it's not fun, we really don't do it. What's crazy about, I know you just talked about the movies, and I just wanted to say, so, I don't even know, when I put, because I went to go see your movie the day it came out. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, all the love. Uh, But I took Kevin Garnett to go see it with me. I don't even know if you knew that was him. Oh, you did? I didn't know if you knew that. I did. But it was funny, because after the movie, you guys said something similar. Mm -hmm. I said, Kev, what do you think of the movie? He was like, it was different. And what he said, the way he described it, he said, it was art. Yeah. And then when I got you on the phone, that was the first thing you said. I was like, I didn't really know if it was a docudrama or this or that. And the first thing you said, it was art. Yeah. So it it was it was it made me think about that kind of like when we watch movies and we do things, we're used to seeing it a certain way. Yeah. And we're not always open to seeing it a different way. And if it's not the way we're normally used to, then we kind of think, okay, it wasn't good. Right. And also, it was about a positive image of a black family making money other than, in, you know, sports or entertainment. Right. So it was just, that's why those movies don't get made. There's no algorithm or, like, tested, proven, you know, profit from that because they don't get made. They only make movies about us hurting each other or getting hurt. If it's not a slave movie or us getting beat the fuck out of, it's like us beating the fuck out of each other. And that's it. And so I'm your not, goal I'm, is to change the narrative on that. I, I am changing the narrative. But Love I, it. But I'm the solution. I'm in it. 
So the things people complain about, I'm actually chipping away at the mountain. So if I don't like the jails, I go to the jails. If I don't like the education, I go to the schools. You know, if I don't like the curriculums, I make my own book. And then I make my own content for my child. If I don't like the movies, I make my own movies. If I don't like the music, I make my own music. If I don't like the clothes, I make my own clothes. If I don't like the vitamins, I make my own vitamins. I love that. So speaking of the uh, education thing, you got some, it's, what's it called, OSG or something like that, yeah, that's okay. got like 200 principals that you work with yeah. to work on curriculum that's not being taught? That, it's, a, it's the OSG, that's a Off School Grounds, and, you know, that's curated by Dennis, Dr. Dennis McKeezy. And, yes, it's 200 principals and probably more now from predominantly economically challenged places and, you know, black. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, what we do is we talk about the things. It's talking, number one, about focusing on what we need, like, for education. So it's like you could give a kid a bunch of love, but if you don't, your reading scores are down, he's going to jail. So, it, you know, that doesn't balance. It's almost like, you know, enabling a child. So just knowing how to help is important. But for me, it was teaching this, the principals. I teach them a class on Tuesdays. Um, about being entrepreneurs, about branding, about doing things and looking at things different, about dreaming. None of them were dreaming. And if you're not dreaming, your, princi- your teachers aren't dreaming. They're not teaching the kids to dream. And that's where the fundamental problem is that nobody knows what their dreams are. We're taught not to dream but to survive. And if we don't survive a certain way, we're doing it wrong. And I'm not down for that program, and I never was. I've never had to live in that life. Like, I'm damn near Gary Coleman. I've been rolling since I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've never lived a normal adult life. You know, but I do appreciate the life I did live before my adult life. You know, it, it's embedded in me. And those, like, morals and those principles will never, like, just leave just because I'm not there anymore. You know, when you understand the problems of the people, it's because they were your problems. And you don't forget the problems that you had and the people that helped you get out of that. So I have to make the things, when I, like, karmically, I can't sell something to my people just for money and know I'm hurting them. That's what drug dealing was. And I started to feel guilt. So I know at least when I used to hustle, I didn't sell drugs to no pregnant women or no kids or no shit like that. But, you know, it did, you know, I had to stop it. It was like, it just was karmically wrong. Right. You know what I mean? It, and then with music, it was like, yo, I, I'm watching what my music is doing to my culture because we're talking about things that really aren't so positive and it's being celebrated. And, you know, karmically, that didn't do so well for me either. So I'm like, yo, I, you know, I can, for me, I can only make good money because I'm conscious. If I was stupid, I probably wouldn't have to feel those recourses or repercussions. But my thing is I'm happy. So I'm just happy with just going up a mountain all the time. And then I'm, I'm enlightened. So I'm aware of the things I could do. So I have to do them. So I didn't know I could fucking make movies. If I didn't think I could fucking act or I didn't think I could design or if I didn't think I could make music. Like, you know, I'll make an album. I'll be on that shit singing like I could really sing. I can't sing. <laughs> But I, I I sing so confident it sounds good. But I, I'm I'm tone. I, I don't think I'm that good tone wise. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm just loud. So Wait, some some news that is real based on that um, educational background. They just struck down the affirmative action for colleges. How you think that's going to affect minorities moving forward with different things in colleges or high schools or how people move around? Because that's pretty fucked up that they took that away. Well, the thing is. And I'll deal with that. I got to understand it a little better. But I'm not really Paul's Jack in college, in high school, in the way that it teaches us now. Everyone I know just gets debt. And yeah. I put a kid through college, and it didn't really help. It just wasted fucking time. So I understand the program. What you have to understand about the curriculums that we're living by right now was Thomas Jefferson implemented that curriculum. And that curriculum was for white men to learn how to tell black men what to do and for black men to learn how to listen to white men. And we still abide by that curriculum to this day. So I'm I'm not jacking this curriculum. So that's why I make my own schools. That's why I make my own curriculum, like I said. That's why I talk to the principals. That's why I go in the schools. Like, Sharon went with me. Like, you know, like, the reason why uh, Sharon and I got cool was because he's on the same type of time as I am. He really wants to help, but he's ready to just do it. So, like, I could be talking to him, and I'd be like, you know what? I feel like, you know, cleansing. I should go to Africa. And then, like, the next day, he's there, you know? (laughs) Or he'll be like, you know what I'm saying? It's, like, crazy. I'll be like, you know, know, I got to... You know, where I'm from in Camden, we got the schools, a center, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I'll be in New York. Oh, let's go tomorrow. Boom. Next day, we did. You know, and then just move around and, and, and go to have the patience to do all of these things and go into these schools. But it, the, the thing about guys like us is if we have a roadmap, then we're going to do the right thing. If we don't have a roadmap, it becomes instinctual and, and laws could get broken. <laughs> you know, because men, like, you know, man's laws are different than God's laws and the shit that bothers you. 
you know, eye for eye sometimes becomes the thing, but you have to, that's what I mean. Like, niggas is fucking with my money. And I'm like, I got to internalize that because it's not legal, what I'm, what I'm visualizing. Right. But I would never do that. I would never push that button. And God would never give me that button to push if I would. On a lighter subject, so the rumor is you started Pause. There's, no, we- rumor. There's no rumor. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no rumor. Uh, yes. Me That's and, you? My crew. Me and my crew. Because I, I don't want to like take... How did that break. come about, though, Dan? Yeah, it was levels to it. First it was... Because people don't even know that there's another half of that game. So, like... I don't, you know, I don't even want to tell the secret. Because I didn't tell... We never told people about Pause. It was always like a secret that people figured out. But it just was... First it was, I don't like that. So if you did some shit, we'd be like, oh, I don't like that. And No, first it was A-Yo. And then it was, I don't like that. And then AO became the response. Like if if you if you if you say pause, if you say something crazy, and somebody says AO first, yeah. then you can't say pause no more. You, you, you can just laugh at you. <laughs> so, but people don't know that. And then you, that's why I'd be like, yo, if I said pause, you, you can't laugh at me no more. But if you if, I, if you if you go AO before I say pause, then it's on. But people don't even know that half of the game. So right. some, sometimes you might hear me like somebody say some crazy. I'd be like, hey yo. Or some, if then they, <laughs> if they don't know that means they can't say pause. That means it's over for them. That means you can laugh at them all day. Oh, yeah, okay. So there's another half of that game. I just heard Cam, Cam Cameron saying pause on his podcast because he can't left from right. Because you get, he get it from you. He stole it. Hundred, not stole it. We grew up together. He borrowed it. Well, he what, borrowed it. What happened is you can't say no homo. You'll get. He will get. You know. He he'll get. He'll, he'll get. They'll get canceled for that. Right. So people have gotten the fines in the basketball league for saying no homo. Pause. Oh wow. So he has to revert back to pause. And when they did it like they're the younger version of us so they were always the wilder more flamboyant in your face with it so they didn't hide things so in my generation we wasn't really trying to get caught in nothing like i couldn't have tattoos till i got out the game you know we was playing it like that but they're a little more flagrant about shit so i'd always be like that no homo shit is offensive <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying maybe not now but at some point you know so we always stuck with pause so now they, you know if they're doing their thing on tv which i like and i'm happy about you know, they got to say pause or else they're not going to get any sponsors. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would think so. That's my logic to why he's saying that other post to the one that they so made. pause all you. That's you. Yes. You and your crew. Yeah. I, the best out. How you know. long you been doing it? Or how long you been saying it? Or when did it come about? How? Sharon say it now. It's, I guess it's a dick. But he's been around me. But kids, you don't understand. Little white kids say it. Yeah. Like, it's not like, it's like a, a thing. Like, it's, I'm, it should be like, because they say it and they don't know I made it up. And I'm like, damn, you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and I don't want to do that to everybody and sound like Melly Mel going, I made up yes, yes, y'all. You know what I mean? And I, I'm, I'm like, I, I did do that though, yeah. We did no disrespect to Melly Mel. He's the man. You know, <laughs> he's mad strong. You see him, Melly Mel? No, nah, yeah, I know Melly Mel. He's still, you know, fuck around. Yeah, he's staying you know in the mean? gym. Yeah, and Bronx with my brother. But um, they used to work out together. But um, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we made that up. It's just, uh, my crew was, my crew was always like the crew that, We've always been so snotty that we didn't take, like we always thought that being too tough was corny. So we always wanted to be, we always had fun. And we're, it, we, it, it, to me, the funnier that you could be and relax is that that's a tough person. But some personality has to come in and act tough and all that shit. Like we laugh at cats like that because we know they're scared. You know what I mean? So we just be relaxed about things and we like to laugh. Like nobody wants to be tough all day. You right. know what I'm saying? So we always had little jokes and our jokes would be like in ways that, only we could laugh. So a lot of times people would just be seeing me laughing. Like I, I'd be making jokes just for me to laugh, not for everybody else. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want everybody to know what I'm laughing at because they can't take it. So it'd be some jokes I'd be like, man, if I say this, this shit would be hilarious, but I know they're, gonna, they're not going to like me anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> but sometimes I can't help it. But if somebody f- crosses that line and starts snapping, then it's like on forever. And then you catch like a, a Just Blaze or a, a bink and that gets that will get sensitive and shit sometimes. <laughs> but you started with me. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's never over. You don't tell me when it's over. It's like smacking somebody and getting mad when they knock your teeth out. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Back in the day, when you guys started Rockefeller, who came up with the name? Um, no one ever talks about the origin of the name. Yeah, you know, we always do. Tom Hooker, he did from Original Flavor. So, okay. Yeah. So when everybody, you know, people had crews. You know, I, I remember it was funny. I, I, I was. Uh, it was. Um, Damn, I forgot his name. It was because we were talking to Eric Sherman the other day. What was the name of the Eric Sherman squad? The Bomb Squad? What was it called? What, they had, what was the name of their crew? But anyway, their manager, I forgot his name, but we, you know, I tried to get advice. And I think I remember him saying, like, yo, y'all like got to be a crew. So everybody was like a crew. 
So I was like, what are we going to call our crew? Because I started to have a lot of artists. And um, I was asking, like, because I would do things like have think tanks, but I didn't call them think tanks back then. But we would just go, maybe go to BBQs and get drunk with the Hawaiian joints and just think about something, like how to floss really good. Like, our flossing was always, with me, very strategic. So I asked Tone Hooker. I couldn't get. I couldn't think of a name, and he came with that name, Rockefeller, because it represents money, and we was kind of tough back then. You know what I mean? At least we thought we were. Okay, Eric Sherman from EPMD. It wasn't him. Oh, but, okay. But the thing is, who had him? Somebody had him on the line, and I was. We, we were talking to him, Eric Sherman. You probably didn't even know who it was, and I was like, Nah, he's a legend, and he had beats. Remember? I was like, That's Eric Sherman. Trust me. You know. Um, but. E- 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 yeah. No. yeah, EPMD. Yeah, EPMD. But yeah, what's EPMD. the name of their whole squad? With uh, with DJ but, Scratch. What? Uh, yeah. Red Man. They had, they had a team, and they, oh, okay. I think they were called the Bomb Squad or something. But and they had like uh, Keith Murray, and they had that. So I think I and I was talking to their manager. You know, this is like when I'm like you know I'm 19, 20 at this time. Right. Now you got to remember, like by the time Rockefeller was over, I was only like 33 years old. Young. I was, I, I didn't know it. It was like, I was already the super, I had oh, already. Death Squad. Death Squad, yeah, yeah, Death Squad. So I forgot the dude's name Um, that was the manager, but, you know, there'd be certain people like a Lays with MOP that was a, a you know, on all those guys, uh, Steve, all the guys that were like the Dame Dashers of their crew, we all would get together and talk and snap and who had the better right. deal and blah, blah, blah. So it was always very competitive back then, but like guys like Lays, you know, I would ask people certain things, like what would be the best way to do certain things and how to navigate through things because I was just straight from the street, you know what I mean? So I didn't understand how, how the, all these suckers was in control, but now I completely understand it. Only suckers could be controlled. So the one thing is everybody always talk about or want to hear something negative, but I just wanted to hear your best story about being with Rockefeller. Like, I'm sure it was a thousand great moments, but what's the one you can't forget? There's so many, bro, because <laughs> everything was monumental. So to get on the radio was a celebration. To go gold was a celebration. I remember the first time we went gold, I put out an ad sticking up my middle finger. That's DJ funny. and Biggs, like, fuck God, I didn't help. You know, we did it anyway, gold, independent. That's like, dope. I always take pride in doing things on my own, especially when they try to stop me. And just pure good work. You can't stop pure good work. You don't have to do me a favor if my work is good. I just got to make the product and sell it. Right. You know, and, and that's, you know, it is what it is, man. Like some people are in their favor and I don't want to be in their favor. I don't want to be, if, 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 if another culture is celebrating me too much, the ones that are oppressing me, then I must be doing something for them that they're celebrating me and keep giving me certain opportunities because I must be doing something that they love or else they wouldn't do that. So I don't want to be that guy. I'd rather go down like, you know, Alexander the Great, but like, the black version that doesn't get killed. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I want to be known as a warrior. I like I like I like being a general. So what's your opinion on the current state of hip hop? Do you follow the current artists? Yeah, what rappers you like right now or don't like? Um it's like usually the people that are on TikTok that I see, but I, I can't judge rap because it's always about what's going on in the street and a lot of times it's about killing. So I, I don't want to be that guy. I don't judge them for doing that. But I would never sell that. That's why I got out of hip-hop. But I'm not I'm not ever going to hate on hip-hop ever. So I'm 52, right? Hip-hop's supposed to change. It's not supposed to be the same as it was. You know, I like that, that, that kids can make money being independent. I like that that's what's on their, their brain. And because of streaming and other ways, and, you know, they can do things on their own. It just seems like there's... I see when, there's a couple, the ones that are rolling are rolling a lot more than we was when we was young as rappers. Seems like there's a lot more money in the game. But I'd be like, I'm glad I'm not in that game right now because it seems too dangerous. So like when I was in the game, it was Pac got killed and then Biggie got killed and then nobody got killed for a while. You know, we went through this. They dying left and right now. We went through the, it's like normal now. It's like, we're, 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 it's, it's, been, it's become normalized. You know you what I mean? A, a, pe- a thought on the young thug gunner situation? Yeah, I was gonna ask well, that. All that shit is sad. It's a cycle. It's like, it's like and it's like the it's like the movie that happens over and over again. Gunner like, out though, right? Yeah, know. he's out, and like his his last album, he had no features. Do you think he's gonna get black? Cause people are saying he's blackballed by the industry. Do you think he can find him? Way but they back? think he they think he talked. 
I don't think about other people like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, that never like crossed my mind. Like I wasn't like, I wonder if Gunner's gonna be okay or if he's gonna sell regular. Like, that's, that's not, I'm not really worried about that. You know, I don't. I'm not in that game. I don't have a dog in that fight. I just say, bottom line is generally it's just a cycle that needs to stop for anybody, whether it's them or anybody else. It's always sad to see two, because those guys, regardless of what whoever's in jail, they're, they're probably fathers and a family will be disenfranchised, and that's always the program. And then you know to be made an example of in that way, and then you know it's it's you know look who's cooking them. It's a it's a it's a black woman, so it's like you know all of that shit is crazy. I I I, I it's, it's more fun to watch Trump get cooked. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, Boo, let's talk about Trump, right? Now that's r- real. Like for me, the shit that's been real gangster is like that shit that's been happening in Russia with the head of Wagner and how he fronted on Putin. Now that's beef. And the way he did that shit was ill. Now that's war. You feel me? I'm talking about that type of shit. You know what I mean? So he probably heard Putin was about to do something. It was like, and they tried to bomb on him. And he was like, yo, do you know what happened? Do you? You know no, what I mean? No, no. Like, I know about the Russia-Ukraine thing, but Come on, the recent bro. news? You know about Gunner and Young Thug, but you don't know about <laughs> the, the, head of, the, head, the head of Wagner yeah. telling the most illest dude, the gangs in the world, like, yo, bro, you tried, he said, just because you got a warehouse full of guns, you think you could do that to us? First, I'm going to take this town. He took the town and was like, yo, I just took the town and didn't even pick up a gun. And now I took, took another town and said, yo, if you don't hand me them generals, the ones that's fucking up, I'm coming to Moscow. So then they they got all thing. And then the dude from um, Bel, I forgot, Bel, Boris, I forgot the other country. He came and gave them exile and they squashed it. Zelensky, and, the Ukraine guy? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. That's some gangster shit. And now we all trying to figure out what really happened. Was that like a... a I don't think Putin would take an L like that in front of everybody. So Putin takes an L and you don't know about it. You know why? Because they're distracting you with bullshit. They are. But it was <laughs> a fucking case that hasn't even happened for three years. Like, we don't want to hear about that shit too, too much. That group was first fighting for yeah. Russia. And yeah, then they that, that was their crew. Because like, okay, well. he was like, he started, he got, first of all, he got on, or he started going on his Instagram and was like telling all Putin's secrets. So he was like, yes, this shit is war. He's killing people, he dogs. Like he was going in there. He was flipping on Putin. Mm. But I, I, the way it looks, because they both from St. Petersburg, and he did 10 years, and he used to, like, you know, he came, when he came home, he started selling hot dogs, paws, that's the story, and, <laughs> and and opened up restaurants, and Putin gave him a billion-dollar contract to, 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 to cater all his shit, and made, that's why he's an oligarch. So he flipped on him, you know what I mean? So then, you know, he put this army, he got 50,000 men. Mm. He's like, I got 50,000 men, and he's been fighting for them. So he's the one that's been fighting for Russia. But they're like crazy. They're like, no, they just trained. we kill like, you with sledgehammers. This is the people that I... No, that's, the, that's, this, their, that's their motto. They give, yeah. they give each other This is the people that... Remember the, the movie, thing I just did, that movie, movie thing, and I, I, would right. get out. I was one of them. Oh. That's how I learned about them. I was like looking them up and shit, and I was like, oh, shit. Now, no that's, some, now, now, now that's gangster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it came out, yep. This nigga fronted on Putin. And had Putin with the tanks out and shit, like waiting for him and shit. Mm. That was I was like, ooh, that dude, that dude, you gotta check that dude out. He's but but I was thinking but usually was Putin wouldn't back down. That's how fucking crazy they are. Nah, he, and knew, Putin, he knew everything. He knew where everything yeah. was. He knew how to hit him. So they started marching on Moscow, and Putin's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. They squashed it in. Right. The, I was in a plane. <laughs> what do we gotta do? Here? I was on a plane <laughs> watching it. By the time it landed, that shit was over. Wow. I was like, yo, they fronted on that. Yo, he fronted on Putin. I never seen Putin get like get get fronted on like that mm. in the middle of a war, you know. So they got to straighten that out. But yeah, that's the type of shit that I be looking at, like real shit. Not to say that the other stuff isn't, but you know, that's some gangster shit right there. I'm paying attention to like you know what's happening because the next war that they're probably gonna have will be with the aliens. That's what's supposed to be like the next fake war is with aliens. And I don't shit. know so what about play. that money shit going so, on. Which money shit? Brazil, China. Russia, I think there's like four or five big countries that are gonna start their own currency and try to take down the yeah. dollar. For, yeah. For me, it's like I don't give a fuck. Whatever, whatever's currency is is popping, I'm gonna have it. So, <laughs> you know, either way, I win. I don't be worried about that type of shit. Like I know I'm looking at the moves, but I'm like, you know, that's why they said they killed Gaddafi. But you know, I, I, I uh, you know, I feel like the Rothschild. Either way, the, the American dollar doesn't behoove us, bro. So that shit don't matter. None of us have no dog in that fight. Like right now, money's not backed by gold, and it hasn't been yeah, in a while. It's to be. 
Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? But it's not backed by no gold. That shit is all bullshit. They just print money at this point. Yeah, so that money game, money's meant to control us. God didn't make that shit, so I don't pay attention to it. And what's happening now is they're going to make everything tracked by in Bitcoin or whatever, so they could track it on the uh, on the blockchain. So all your money's about to be tracked. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to ask you. I think, I think Biden did an executive order for that shit. About and because you do NFTs and stuff once in a while, right? Or you were trying to do I was, NFTs? I was, I was checking the game out. But so what do you think about the future of like NFTs and crypto and all that stuff? I think it loses its value when they can track it, no? I think it's and about it- the tracking. I think it's not really about the NFT or the art. That's an ancillary thing. It's about everything being tracked. and making So they things. can tax it? It's just so people could get paid. It's just full transparency. You know, you know, it's all tracked. It's, it'll put fucking accountants out of business. Everything will be counted and, you know, and plus people get to get money and residual income when things get sold. But it's, it's just... A, a, it's a it's a magnifying glass on your bread, but I ain't got shit to hide. <laughs> yeah, you ain't gonna be able to slip. You ain't gonna be able to do nothing when things get paid and tracked digitally. It's like how weed is like you know bud to sale, you know seed to sale. So that yeah. shit, it's like every every bud has a fucking social security yeah. card. Yeah. Like so Dame can't, I, can't cheat. So Dame, check this out. I don't know if this is bullshit or not, but back in the day, they say once you reach a several a certain level of success in life. The, lo- the Illuminati knocks at your door. You guys were at the top of every every chart, the biggest group in the world, the biggest team in the world. Did the Illuminati ever knock at your door? Some dark people did not, but I didn't answer. Mm. But I can't say that for everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> did they have a baby? They eating babies. Is this rumor true? Do they eat babies the at the top? <laughs> I said I locked the door. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they was doing. I did not answer. Oh wow! That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like so they be, come at night, nah, like bro. in a. I don't know, like, <laughs> nah, they, they come and be like, "Yo, come check." I don't know if they. I don't. I, I, like I said, what people would call the Illuminati might not be specifically what right. Illuminati is. Yeah. So it's like when people want you to do dark things for money and compromise. You know, I consider that the Illuminati. So yes, yeah, some dark people have come through. They don't come through the way, like, you think the devil comes dressed up as a devil, you'd run. They come dressed up as, like, a fine chick or some shit or something that's a weakness for you. So they come as, a, you know, some kind of a trigger, uh, you know? So it doesn't come in the, something that scares you. When people are tricking you and robbing you, when people are, like, robbing you, then they're scaring you. But when people are, like, conning you, they have to make you like them and be comfortable with them enough to give away your master or give away, your, mm. your you know, all the things that will help your family in the future. So the devil always comes in, in, a, in a very appealing way, and that's the test. You know what I mean? So What was the way they came at you? If you, if you want to share it. I think y'all see the way. They wanted me to sell out my culture. You know, They'll, they'll let me rent their house if I, I give away everybody else's that I love mm. and act like it's mine when it's not. So, you know, the first thing Leo Cohen did when we signed was try to get me to have a beef with someone he had a beef with. And I was like, why? He said, we together, right? And I'm like, nigga, you fighting any of my beefs? <laughs> I got mad. I got wild. We doing that. Let me know. So it was, he was already trying to put a battery in my back. Mm. There's been a lot of foul shit that I've seen, you know. But again, I'm trying to stay out the way. You know right. what I mean? Like, I, I'm not, all I want to do is do what I do. Be talented. Be artistic. Help people as I'm helping them I don't I don't cheat so I don't I don't need to play with cheaters you know I take pride in being a real man like I take pride in it some people don't care but I can't like like even if um I feel that things could be misconceived that I did something that was other than what would be like an honorable man should do that would be like bothers me you know it was a time with like uh Paid in full, and they were asking me if I was still talking, accusing me of being cool with someone that cooperated. And I'm like, I'm just offended that anyone would even think I would do that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the things, the, the rumors that you hear about being unthorough will bother me. But imagine really doing unthorough shit and being guilty of it. Like, it's, I can't be guilty of being whack. I'm not whack. If I'm funny. doing something whack, I'm gonna be like, that was whack. I ain't never doing it again. It was, it was not. Being intentionally whack is whack. You know, some you could be whack and not know it. You know, you, you know what I mean. Like, but if you know it's whack and you still do it, you know, karmically you deserve anything you get. Really, it's funny you even mentioned that because that was, that was the one thing that Kevin told me. He's like, you know, I heard a lot about Dane being in the the movie business and he do good business. 
That's the first thing he said. He said he do good business. Well, you got to remember, if I did bad business, you wouldn't be reading about several people right. that I put in business on the Forbes chart. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I, it's not about me. Because it's, it's crazy how I look at my success. I really look at my success by the people that I've helped. Mm -hmm. like, every, like, people think every time that, like, you hear that Jay did this or Jay did that, that I would feel a way. I, that shit makes me proud. Right. Every time. It's so funny. They think it hurts, and I'd be like, why would that hurt? Pause. If I was a bitch-ass nigga, it would hurt. But all <laughs> i do is see, like, yo, that's just another feather in my cap. Right. Every time Kanye does something, every time Kevin Hart does something, every time Lee Daniels does something, every time Earn Your Legion, not that I put them in business, but those are guys that I know that I helped with, giving them advice, that, that listened, you know? And then people that I see that, I've been, that I gave advice that get killed, that shit hurts too. Mm. You know what I mean? But, uh... When you, was Kanye always Kanye? No, nah, he didn't always have a billion dollars. No, but, <laughs> nobody no, but sometimes was, nobody, people still had that same personality. No, nah, he didn't have that same personality. Nobody, was, nobody was listening to him before he had money. And, and you were the first to put him on, right? And I was the first to like put him on a record. No, nah, he was one oh. records. I was the first person to like kind of protect him, you know, because a lot of people were pulling at him. You know what I mean? So in the, you know, he wasn't like a street guy, but he was kind of in the street mm. dealing with street people. So I was like, yo, just, and it wasn't like no tough shit. It's just that I, I would know people and be like, yo, could you just give him a moment to just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he would, then he got too comfortable sometimes and be in the wrong places with his chain out. And me and Beans would have to pull up, you know, with my, you know, where we was with. But nah, he, you know, he's never, I, I, he was only wearing polo before. He wasn't designing. Right. You know, I remember that conversation I had. I'm like, yo, if you really want to be fly, you got to stop. It's not polo, bro. Like, polo's fly, but that doesn't make you like, in, the, in fashion. Right. And then I brought him to London. And, I, you know, I, 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 I brought him around. You know, but I brought everybody around, but he took advantage of it. But as he became more powerful, yeah, and people started to listen to him, he became louder. But, no, he was way more humble in the room before, for sure. He was more quiet. But he would do things that most wouldn't. Like, in a room full of real rappers, he'd be like, play his shit and start rapping. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he was always unapologetic. Right. But it was more like little... Real little brother shit. You know what I mean? Like, he was like, he was young. Yeah, because mm. I saw his documentary, and the first two episodes are focusing in the early 2000s, and then, like, the third episode focuses on, like, right now. And I personally saw a change, but, yeah, it's good. But you're supposed to change. Yeah. If you're the same person you are when you're young, you're fucking dumb. Like, you have the same spirit, but as you evolve and you grow, and you don't do the same shit. Like, I used to go out every night. Now I stay in every night. You know, I, I used to really gauge my success on how much money I had, and now I gauge my success on how happy my family is. Speaking of that, when did you feel the switch of, like, because obviously, you know, the start of Rockefeller and starting shit like that, hip-hop, it's like, you know, money, get money. When did you go from it being like, I got to be rich as fuck, to now doing stuff for the art, doing stuff for the culture, really switching over to feeling better about doing shit that way? When I made enough money to do it on my own. The minute I had like eight million or ten in the bank, fuck all y'all. That's what it was. And I would have been rolling if these niggas wasn't hating. You know what I mean? Like corporate but being indie, but I'ma still do it. Can't stop me. It just takes a little longer. But you know, I think me showcasing what I'm doing by investing everything in me independently and walking away from corporate and never folding is giving other people the power and inspiration to do it. So, you know, I only look at the light side of the yin and the yang. You know what I mean? Like, there's a good and a bad. I look at the good in anything. So I'm diabetic. I must be to help people. You know, anything that happens to me that I can survive to me is for me to teach to others that can't. So, you know, I, I just, I'm proud that I'm strong. That's how I look at it. You know, and I'm strong for the right shit. Like, I don't want to be in jail and have to be like, I'm strong in jail. I'm in jail. I don't want to be in jail. You know, I want to be strong and free. And the that's, one, that's, the, that's the key, is strong, free, and stay alive. The one thing that you mentioned when I went to your, your uh, preview of your movie a few days ago, which I thought was super interesting, and I really, I'm sure you're going to do it because you tend to do everything that you talk about, is that you said you're going to premiere your movie, teach people how to make an individual movie, have a therapy session, uh, uh, do that, and kind of create this event that people can go to and get all this information and walk actually away with something. 
college, the new college. I love that. It's called New University. It's funny, when I was in college um, uh, in Oregon, I was in Oregon at the time, uh, KRS-One came to speak, and he talked about the pimp and whole society. And he, he would ask all these college students, full of a room, do you want to be a pimp or do you want to be a hoe? And then he would explain what that meant. It was really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. So you should do that in college. And yeah. I remember he was really getting paid to, to travel the country and, and spread his message. Yeah, that's called good money. You can make money teaching people. You don't have to feel guilty about it when you spend it. But, yeah, that's, that's the, you know, I, I, I want to re-engineer everything because entertainment is mostly meant to be a distraction from the life that you hate. And it usually just triggers us into hating each other and taking it out on us other than, rather than the people that are oppressing us. So I want to entertain people and teach them at the same time. Right. I, I want them to have a different experience. I, I want a show to be not a distraction, but like a focus group. I don't do distraction. I do focus, you know. And every second that someone's around me, I want them to come out wealthier with knowledge and have the ability to go make some real money, but it be on them. You know, like one of the things I'm proud of is like 19 Keys because he was in the audience at the schools with me and Billy Carson. So I caught a partner. Now he does, you know, we do activations together. Now we do, you know, we make content together. So when a student becomes a partner, you did your job. Right. You know, like, a, like, like I might go, if, if, if I made, if Kanye and Jay are considered billionaires or whatever, and I'm the one that taught them, it makes me a really good teacher. It means I didn't waste my time. <laughs> She's upset. I'm like, I'm ill. Teach me. <laughs> you're not doing bad. This is your building. I mean, you're, you're, you know, people, it's a mentality thing. It's, it's like, again, slave or pimp. I don't necessarily frame it like that, but it's more like, you know, general or soldier. Either you're going to give orders or you're going to take orders. Right. And I don't like taking orders. You know, when the cops do it or at airports, that should be pissing me off. But um, you have to make a choice, and it's a mentality that comes with it. So, like, I can't approach anything in the soldier's perspective. I just don't see, I don't understand that language. But when I talk to a bunch of generals, they understand me. But when I talk to a bunch of soldiers, they get offended by my tone. Right. Only soldiers get offended, like, don't leave me that way. <laughs> but generals be like, yeah, I need that kind of aggression next to me when I fight. You know, you start to see, like, yeah, that's right. If I'm on the wrong side of that, I, I don't want to be. But... On the right side of that, I would prefer, and I know that could become an asset. Generals look for other generals with good army so they could get together and fight the same war. It makes things easier. You know, sharing resources makes things easier. But we're always meant or taught to not to divide culturally. Like, no, don't work with your brother. Try to fuck his wife. That's, what, that's all it is. It would be like, what type of shit is that? And, us, you know, that's why it keeps us fucking not doing anything. You know what I mean? It's like, there's just no moral fabric, and it's meant. Survival mode is always an excuse to do something that's against your morals. And 99% of the world is in survival mode. So that's another reason why I got to, like, kind of be in a bubble, because I'm like, I understand, you know, you might compromise. But don't compromise with me so I end up having to hang out in gym pop in a jail. <laughs> you feel me? Like, don't, don't right. try to pull me back in that world with your bullshit. But I know I have a temper... That's why I talk to a therapist. That's why I keep puppies and female energy around. Because I'm bruised. You know, pause. I've been, I've seen a lot. And there's things that I don't know that bother me that I still react to. That's unrecognized trauma. Mm. You know what I mean? We all have it. So we, a lot of times we don't know what's bothering us. And we don't even know we're being assholes. We think we're just defending our feelings. You know? So you want to make sure sometimes that you're not hurting people that you love unconsciously because of some shit you went through when you was a kid. Right. So I think the reason why, like, my relationship with my girl Raquel is so balanced is because her parents are still together and she never saw them really fight. But also that could be a curse because when we fight, she'd be like, like, she's traumatized by it because she's just not used to it. Mm. And I'd be like, you know, that's good. I don't, I don't think you should ever be used to somebody fighting with you, but at least it doesn't happen so much that it's in, that it, that is normal to you, you know. Like when you can say hurtful things to people you love, 
and that becomes normal, that means you're doing it too much. So if I say something to her, and it'd be like, like you said some shit, like like she's just not used to me saying certain things to her. Mm. You know, and it'd be minor shit. I was like, that was nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's not bitch, cunt, it's none of that. Right. But she's just not used to that because I don't treat her that way. Right. You know what I mean? So we have like a confrontation, and it's usually more about her being scared of something. And I don't, I don't like fear. I don't like anything negative said to me. So it'd be like, don't worry about things certain times. Just relax. All right. <laughs> Yesterday you talked, at least at your premiere, you talked about going to the movies with your daughter. How did that feel to go to the movies and watch your own personal movie? That shit was great. Just watching them proud, like genuinely, because my daughters just laugh at me all day. <laughs> like, I'm not a legend in my house. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't listen. It's like, it's, it's they just, it's funny. It's like they want to fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? It's right. all they do is bust my chops. But, um, you know, they were genuinely proud. That's dope. They were proud to go to the movie and see it with me and, and really experience it because they saw me editing it. And they think that, you know, maybe based on what the other half tells them, that a lot of what I do is bullshit. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not really as big time as everyone else's because it's not corporately funded. And I would have to explain to them, like, you know what it is? To, you know any of your friends that directed a movie, produced a movie, and independently put it into the theaters? It's right next to Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, and then they, they digested that. And when they looked, you remember when I was editing this part? You remember you was on the set when I shot that? Did you think it would look like that? What do you think I've been doing? Why You thought that girl editor was living with me because I was, you know, doing some funny shit? No, she, <laughs> she, she likes girls anyway. You know what I'm saying? This is the type of shit I got to deal with. Mm -hmm. And then to go right across the street and then see the screening and all those people there. It's player. And, and her to understand that I did. We, we literally, did, that day, we did that. Like, just sent, made a flyer, sent it out. And it was well organized, and it was a good vibe, and uh, you know, it makes you it's it's it's, it's work. it means I, I fought for that for them to see that image, for them not to tolerate a man that's not like my daughter's. It's it's, it's funny, like but let's, especially my daughter, older daughter, she's only around really second generation wealth, and those kids don't have the kind of fire that you know a first generation has. They didn't pass something, and I find that if you don't fight to get something, you're not going to fight to keep it. So after a while, always I'd be telling her, whatever boyfriend she has, I'd be like, yo, just because you got money, if you don't fight for nothing, she's going to get bored with you, bro. Because I'm, I'm, I'm in front of her, and I, that's all I do is fight for shit. She's not going to take you just living off your mother's trust fund or father. You know what I mean? So, you know, I give her an, an example so they know how a man should really act. And also, I'm like a slave for them. I'll do anything they ask because if they get with a man, they got to treat her at least as good as their father or better. So that's why I'm like, I, like hands are down, like, <laughs> and, <laughs> for real. And as a result, that's the narrative. That's how all the men that are in their lives be acting until it's over. They, they, they like, my, and, and they revert. Like my father said, like the other day, uh, my daughter was like some dude would try to take a, to, to eat at like, you know, seven or eight. And she was like, my father said that if it's after lunch, it's dinner, it's a date. You know, but she's able to say that my father gives me this kind of advice. Right. Like, she'll be able to ask me questions. Because she sometimes, I'm like, you really didn't know that? Like, that, nah, he thinks he's hitting something. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, you're not ugly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're beautiful. Like, if anybody, they think they got a shot. I'm hating. I be hating. <laughs> I be telling them everything and, and I be right. You know what I'm saying? That's my daughters and shit. Because, again, I'd be like, yo, I don't want to go to jail. Right. And if somebody did something that I feel is violation, doing something back to them still is going to hurt. I don't want them to feel nothing, you know? So, you know, I stay close with them as much as possible. And then at a certain age, you know, you, you know, your, your children, don't, they don't want to be around their parents all day. Their job is to finesse you. You know what I'm saying? Like, to get money and be able to stay out. They want to be adults told what to do they want freedom because that's how I felt when I was 13 so that transition as well like managing that and being a parent and taking them and taking the time to do some shit and when they see me it's everything's always something going on yeah I'm proud of that I love that feeling that was one of the best feelings it was one of the best moments of my life and uh you have the uh your brand CEO yeah. I'm still trying to get some shoes. Me too, man. Yeah, they keep what's, what's they up keep, with the shoes? They keep selling out. And um, what's the pause? What size are you? 13. No, uh, I won't buy mine. 
I'm no, buying. I, was, I was gonna say if they had sizes. <laughs> I think they sold. Oh, y'all making thirteens? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm cool. Thirteen too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think thirteen yeah. sold out though. That's what I said. I, I think, think they one, dope. I think we have one left. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, um, you know, my, I was, you know, not to be that guy again, though, but like, I was the first dude to have my own sneaker. So I had the CEO with Nike, so I had the old school Barclays. I didn't know that. Yeah, Google, I'll show you. I had that a long time, and then, you know, I, I did a dumb deal with Pro Keds, but I had the license for Pro Keds. You know, that's the thing is I always do certain things first. So being first is not, like, the best sometimes. You open doors for people. Yeah, you're, so, you're there's like, some lessons with being you're, first. You're the proof of concepts, so right? When corporate finally gets it, and you're not the young crispy guy anymore, the young crispy guy will benefit from that. Right. But I, I I'm all right with that because in fashion that's what I was, but in music, you know, other people open the doors for me. <clears throat> you know, so like I feel like Big Daddy Kane and Rakim and all of them and KRS One, like you know. They, they they just they missed that wave by one generation of the big big money that came with it like being on TV and then no internet being around or no Instagram like you know things are different a lot different it's funny how they date I, like even that fifty years of hip hop thing I'm like who the fuck said that hip hop started two years after I was born you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. that shit started way before that like who how, that's like saying when did rock and roll start now they putting a date on hip hop Mm. So I don't even really like that shit too much. Mm. Like, how you gonna say for, that we young like that? Nigga, hip hop made it came before rock and roll. Right. Because y'all recognized it 50 years ago means that's when it started to exist. And now we got a, now we get a fit, now we get a birthday just like we get independence, a Juneteenth, we get a month to celebrate and one day for the rest of the world. Now I'm independence life, not week, <laughs> not independence month. Independence life, independence lifestyle. The dance I do is an independent dance. It's the I could do whatever the fuck I want to do as long as I'm funding my shit. I'm the boss, and it doesn't mean like I was looking at something that um, Charlemagne was saying the other day when they were talking about the interview, and they got it so wrong about me thinking that you can't work with other people corporate. It's about you know. Again, I think I'm going to save that conversation for Charlemagne. So, Charlemagne, if you want to revisit it, we can revisit it publicly, and we, you could talk to me about this. It's not a bad thing. It's just I think they're not clear about what I was saying sometimes, or I don't know. But um, you can work with other corporate entities as long as you're respected as a partner with equity. And it's not bad to have a job. A job, you have eight hours a day to work. But you have another eight to sleep, and then you have another eight to work on your dreams. Right. So to me, if you're just only having a job and not working on your dreams, you're never going to have enough money not to just only pay your bills. And I think what I did and what I said worked out. So, you know, I think um, sometimes my message is makes people uncomfortable, but the only way to grow is to become uncomfortable. So on a supplement level, I don't trust everybody. I don't trust my presser to heal me, educate me, or any of those things. I have vitamins and supplements that make sure every place that I'm weak makes me strong. Gas supplements. The following program is rated TVMALS. It contains strong language and sexual situation. Oh my God. I cannot, like last night was insane. So what can I tell you? He almost broke the bed. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So he started using this cream called Sword Vitality and it's changed everything. You should definitely tell your man to get some. It actually works. Oh yeah. Sword Vitality, the ultimate male enhancer. What's your favorite avenue to go down, like, fashion or, I mean, it's not hip-hop anymore, obviously, art, whatever you got going on. What's, no, your, like what's your favorite space to dream in? Mine, Dash, in the Dash space. Like, I love making music. I love making movies. I love making clothes. Right now, I'm, I'm on another tip, right? Like, I just love new things. It's like, what's the favorite thing? It's like, because the newest thing is usually the favorite thing. Yeah. Like once you did it already and you did it well and like for me it was like I did it so well I have to reapproach it and do it different. Like so now it's like let me see if I could do it with one hand tied behind my back. But sometimes that affects my family. And when you have a lot of children and a lot of families to support, 
and businesses and shit. And like sometimes people think only having money to pay your bills is broke. I'd be like, that's not broke. I just don't have no money to give you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like right now, I just got bill money right now. And I, I'm, I love that to be able to be man enough to say that when it happens. Because then a couple of weeks later, I'd be like, now we clicking and it's back. You know, that's what, that's what happens. You know what that's I'm real. saying? It's part of the game. Yeah, it you is. Know? Some, really some people would be like, there's nobody that stays rich for like, you know, 30, 40 years straight. Unless they're doing something that's not independent, they'd be cheating. But if you're an independent, every everybody has a, a, a bad lick, a good lick. Like most entrepreneurs hit one out of ten. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody hits like psh, psh. you got to lose, you got to burn while you learn. But if you're inspired and you want to do a lot of shit, people don't understand what that even means. You know what I'm saying? Because most people never pay nobody, and they're always getting paid. Nobody's usually a boss. Right? They don't know boss problems. So you can't relate to, to to what a boss and the way a boss acts because you ain't paying. Right. So most of the people that judge me are people that aren't paying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bosses never judge me. Dame, are there any artists that you still work with currently from Rockefeller? Yeah, I just did a record with uh, Freeway. Okay, when did that come out? In October. So, October? Yeah, because I got a Crazy? Yeah, it's crazy. I just listened to it in the car. Sean was hearing some of the first two. I got the first mixes. I play it. That's what's but, up. Yeah, so, you know, again, I'm approached that. Curriculum, show, we did it in five days, taped everything. Did the videos, shot the cover of Vibe magazine. I can talk about it, right? Because, you know, El Boogie, she uh, she shoots a lot of the covers for Vibe. So she was with us. I was like, yo, call her Daytuan. And Daytuan flew up and did the interview, shot the TV show, shot the performance, shot the video, shot all the podcasts, 10 records. You know, we did everything. Shot a fucking, had the chef come in from uh, Hawaii to make us good energizing food. So got a little cookbook, designed the clothing line. So, yeah. That's dope. Uh, and also, I have an album out with camera. Oh. Right now. I didn't even know you put it on an album. I, I'm, I'm ill like that. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, so, you hear that? Did you know about that? I did not. You I did hear you say it. Well, you I didn't heard know it. about the camera on the A-Track? You wasn't there? I guess she wasn't there. That, <laughs> wasn't there. That, that's the name of the that's the name of the joint. <laughs> so it, it, the name of the joint is she wasn't there. And uh so I have records out with Cameron. I got records out with uh record coming out with Freeway. And is is through your independent label or some a joint venture with them? Well, we always get distribution. So, you know, we all work together. Right. You know, so it's like a combination of Cam, A track and thing, and I think I forgot who we got who we did the distribution with. But I also have Blue Rock, and I just made my son the president of Blue Rock. So there's records like that we make with artists on our own, like a Nicolette that we do a co-venture with. Mm -hmm. And then there's records that if you do the whole shit by yourself and just give me the record, we distribute about seven labels. So, you know, and then like I got my soundtracks and then I'm in a band. So the record I did with Freeway is, a, is with, with me and the, with the, the Black Guns, my rock band, and Freeway. So it's a rock rap record. What like you doing in the band? Pardon? What do you play in the band? I'm the lead singer. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Lead singer, all right. But oh, that's it, crazy. I you never heard it? it? Rock band? All that, all that music that was in the uh, thing. You may hear me like, back up. You hear like kind of yelling in some of it. I, I remember hearing Let's go. You hear, let's go. But all that music is my band. So we scored all of that, made all the music. What so was the your violins last and all that. Um, the last show. Where was it at? Our last show was at the Bitter End, right? Nicolette was at the Bitter End, the last with the band. Yeah, the last show was at the Bitter End about, probably about six months ago. But, um, you know, we all, like, 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 Tash is the best guitar player on the planet. The last project he did was with, uh, with Slash from Guns N' Roses. So they going guitar for guitar. I can't wait for that to come out. So I'm like, <laughs> basically, you were in Guns N' Roses. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah. But he's that good. You know, he's the best. And, um, you know, he's, he lives in New York, and I've been in Florida, and, and Drummer uh, Ali, he's been on the road, and we got another, we got a couple of artists. But uh, yeah, Nicolette got a movie coming out, and she's the the lead, uh, uh, like the music in it. Do your dance, fuck it. That's her. That's Nicolette. So okay. yeah, so like all of us uh, have dreams, right? And because I I don't pay enough people enough money to just work for me, I pay them enough to. You know, pay their bills and then and pursue their dreams. Pursue their dreams, and I facilitate them. You know what I mean? So, 
I always have people around me that at any second, if there's some rapping or a studio, I put my young. She's she's like I call her feminine and white Aaliyah. You know what I mean? Because she can do all this type of shit. She feminine. Can she can so rap. when does Nicola album come out? We're dropping singles. We have a, a schedule. So like after starting, what date are we putting out singles? Starting July 11th, there'll be like oh, a new single out every but two weeks. Yeah, because she has like three videos already shot and four videos, and she got records with like you know. Uh, what's what's her name on Spotify? Is it under Nicolette? Is it Nikki Licky or still Nicolette? Oh man, yeah, you gotta be Nikki Licky. <laughs> Nikki Licky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she's very. From what I understand, she's her tongue game is crazy with the girl. <laughs> 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 Shoot. We gotta bring her back in for her own interview. Then you, you should see her. You should see her movie. You should see her movie. Her movie? Yeah. We always, you know, always leave with a movie. So we did like a twenty-two minute film or first episode about how distracted she gets with women. They distract the fuck out of her. Oh, that's wild. Oh, okay. That's crazy. <laughs> you don't even you know definitely got to interview nigga Latin next time you guys. You see town. a movie? Send, send him a movie. Send it to him. Okay. Yeah. So that's gonna. When does that come out? September? Yeah, so September the little movie comes out. So, um, I'm a big Nas guy. And I want to ask you, because <laughs> as a Nas fan, I feel because JC has been so profitable as a business, he's been put up, and JC's great as a musician, but he's not like the top 10 artists, I, rap artists I listen to. Do you feel that because of his business prowess and success, they've... Put him higher than he should be musically. Again, I don't really think about that. Like you know, Nas, I think his business acumen, from what I read, is is really heavy. Like uh, recently, yeah, he not recently. I mean, Nas, that, yeah, some, Nas' business is crazy. You got you got to remember that certain things are about narrative. So the reason why Jay and I, the conversation we had, like, why are you acting like that? was because I want to be looked at as a businessman. This is what he said. That was my, his narrative. So, you know, regardless of who has the most money, like Kanye might be a billionaire or Rihanna, but they don't come across talking about I'm a business person. Right. That's just his narrative. Like, you know, George Clooney and, and, and the other Ryan Reynolds, they all billionaires that, you know, on the low, they don't go and be like, I'm a businessman. That's his thing to make announcements about business because I guess he might have been insecure about the fact that he was a rapper. But I don't I don't I don't think that I don't think that Nas gets any less accolades. I just think that Nas doesn't work so hard on press. Okay. Like you gotta remember, like Jay's married to Beyonce. You know, like none of us are married. You know, that's not what we're doing, right? So that comes with a lot of celebrity and a lot of being in the newspaper. So a lot of us don't want we don't gauge our success on how many times we in the newspaper. Like, going to an event, every fucking event that exists must be the most... That's a business within itself. So there's, like, a certain circle of, like, 10, 20 people that are at every single event, every day at an event. Mm. There's people that... That's their job. They leverage celebrity maybe because of lack of something. So when people are outside too much, that, to me, is overcompensation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's why I stopped going out so much. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm tired. You got to get dressed. You got to go there. There's a driver. It's all this type of stuff. It's, you know, it's a big to do when you go to events. Think about going, and, and it'd be like everywhere in the world. I'd be like, God damn. How many award shows could one person go to? <laughs> how many red carpets could somebody want to walk on? Like, that shit, when I go out like that, I want to go home. I'd be like, oh, okay, I right, mind it. It's not like I want to be there. So just because I think that's, like, for me, I think Nas, for me, the way his approach is way cooler. Because he does cool shit. You know, his shit is cool. Like, you know, then he do Uber. He's a businessman. He's killing it. He's killing it. He just, no, real businessmen and the real rich guys don't make announcements about their money. They don't. Like, yeah. the guys that I know that got real money are not on Forbes. Okay. I think what uh, Alejandro wanted to know, when Nas came out with that Ether album, what was you guys, like, image of that was you guys like we got getting nah, you know, nah, how we, you feel about Jay response I Jay's think response that's where, was I think terrible that's where, yeah it did, but the thing it is we at first hit him with the the, 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 the joint at Summer Jam that was kind of hard 
when we take over the things. But then when he came with the ether, I was kind of hyped because he said my name. I was hyped. <laughs> like, yes, I'm in a map record. But the response, I wasn't there for the response. I, was, I had landed. Irv Gotti fucked that one up. You know, every time Irv got in that business, he fucked shit up. So you would say Nas won the bad that battle? Yeah, that battle. Yeah, yes, that, that's what I thought. But like, you know, what do you mean, Bachano? He did. <laughs> yeah, he won that. I'm not saying he didn't. <laughs> he threw that ito on him. He had the nigga. He had him apologizing. Like, it's the, the the rap that he did was whack. Like when I heard it, I was pissed. Like I heard it. I was coming from doing a Rockwear ad on a private. You know, I just landed from like Arizona. And I'm listening to this shit on the radio. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I'm like, I made, I was like, go to the fucking uh, baseline, you know, because I want to know what happened. I'm like, what the fuck happened? And they in there high fiving and something. What y'all high fiving for? This shit is whack. This nigga talking about other niggas' business and shit. Like, we don't do that, you know? And then it was like, Irv. I was like, Irv Gotti. Call Irv, though. Don't ever get my business again, bro. Like, what you doing? You're not about war. You see how his wars go with rap? He doesn't win them. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. he's not a general like that. So it was like, stay out my business. And Irv keeps talking about me all the time. Like, stop talking about me, Irv. Damn. <laughs> He's still talking about you? Yeah, I be getting these little interviews and shit. He kept like, damn, 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 damn. Like, what the fuck? Who the fuck cares? You know? I don't feel like explaining that. Leave that alone. And all, all this other shit. So it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I don't understand Irv. So have you ever had a sit down after your beef with Jay or even Irv Gotti? Have you had a sit down with them afterwards? I got no beef with Irv Gotti. He oh. just gets on my nerves. Oh. I just want him to stop talking about me. That's okay. I stop talking about me. But um, I'm, stop, I'm sick of him bringing me up on interviews like I'm the go-to for him or something, you know? But because um, it's, it's his story, it ain't, ain't the story, you know? But with Jay, like there was a time that like if my daughter wanted to go to a show or something... I would hit Jay, and not even, like, his show. Like, if I wanted to go to Mumford & Sons or some shit. And, as, like, a gentleman, he did everything right. Like, our correspondence, so we, but we never had that talk. Oh, okay. Nah. He wouldn't, he, I don't think he wants that talk. You I think he's going to have it one day. I would, I would welcome it. Yeah. I want that talk. I'd be curious to know why he did what he did. Right here on That's Fucked Up. <laughs> Jay-Z and Dame Dash. <laughs> that would be me. Coming together. That would be me like, yo, that was fucked up. <laughs> why you do that, my nigga? Like, damn, you know? You didn't have to approach it like that. And why are you still fucking with me, man? <laughs> Call your crew, man. Call your dogs off me, Shadowball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just yeah, part the door. So yeah. Back to the Desco Poppington thing. You got a little kids book coming out by that, right? Nah, it's out. It's called Desco Goes to Space. Yeah. You know, That's dope. Yeah, right. Is that about the dog or the kid? It's about well, who's Desco? Desco's my son. Okay. We're all in it. And it's about dreaming. About, you know, what you can visualize you can do. And uh, I'm really proud of it. And she's already sold a lot of books. A lot of books. Oh, I think it was like I think you told me about that. Like she sold like almost fifty thousand, right? Yeah. She had like forty thousand orders in two months. That's crazy. Yeah. How do you? The board how, of education. You must not over sleep there. over there. We do sleep, but when we wake up, you know, go to work. But just like like you know, I, I my my life is like we work by a pool, you know, and right. we just sit around and plan, and then we leave to just I, like I if I had a, like a partner, you know, like. Like, 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 lately I've been talking to my kids and I'm like, yo, I need help. It's just me. And I'm tired. You right. Know? But I'm having fun. But yeah, I'd be tired sometimes because there's just so many things that inspire me. But it'd be like, that's why I made Boogie the president of Blue Rock. You know, it's like, yo, I can't, I can't run the music shit because I'm not that into the business of it all anymore. I'd rather be an artist. You love music. And we actually have an infrastructure and the whole crew and all that. And I'll help you. And he, he wants to do it. So yeah, you know, bong. And even the stuff we doing with the vitamins and right. all that, you know, that's going to be a vertical one of my kids are going to have to pay attention to. For every octopus leg, every octopus leg has a brain. So I need a brain for every vertical that I have for my octopus. Right. But it's just my brain right now. And it's like... <laughs> Dame, I know you're always talking about, like, being an entrepreneur, owning it, the business, all the way through. How do we become... How do we get distribution? It seems like yeah. artists are unable to acquire that, and we always have to go to the big wigs to, to get that done. How do you have you been able to execute that yet? 
I have to be the distribution. So what we have to do is if I have a following, you have a following, and everyone else we know, we have to come together and we have okay. to dis- The power of subscribers is distribution. So everybody comes together. That's my thing. And you'll see how I distribute. Like the movie is in the in the theaters, so I can showcase that on my streaming service. I make movie the- theatricals that come to our to our to our streaming service. But I'm gonna there's, there's a lot I got an answer for that. I don't want to say it right now too clearly until I do it. Okay. But um, I do have an answer for that. But bottom line, it entails us sticking together. We have to become the distribution. We're the people. And that's through TV well, too, right? All of it. All, well, yeah. If, 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 if Byron Allen or Tyler Perry or you know anyone that's over there will will pass the, you know pass a plug. Yeah, you know it'd be a lot easier. But, you know, motherfuckers don't want to work together. Do you have an Skitty opinion Duff. on the current state of like streaming movies? How? Yeah, my opinion is the, the the paid stream or paid subscription don't work. It got to be free, so that's why we're launching America New, free, different business model. But it don't work for nobody. It don't work for Netflix. It don't work for Disney. It don't work for no. The number one, it's like number one is Disney. Number two is Netflix. But they both lose over a billion dollars a year. Disney How might make possible because they spend too much on making this shit. And people bootleg shit. Not, nobody wants to pay for all those apps. But two, you know, while like you know, Netflix is down forty percent, Tubi is up forty percent because it's free. Mm. It's free TV as opposed to cable. And it has commercials too. That's a big thing. That's what free TV is commercials. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Tubi. So that's what I'm gonna launch with commercials. You have the option. You could pay per view, subscribe, or free. It's funny because you turned me on to Tubi, and I sat there and watched. Uh uh, a movie yesterday, and they just they run in commercial. That's yes. they went back to the old yeah. model. No, that's just, that's free TV. Yeah, but that's that's where the money's at. Free TV always had more money. So the difference between HBO and NBC, you can't even compare. Mm. You know, like how my dad says it. Watching free TV is like he likes the commercials because it's like enough time to get up, go to the bathroom, then go back in. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A little break. <laughs> and, and then you don't have to think of what you're going to choose either. Like the TV tells you, watch but the, this. But the good, the good part about it is, there's <laughs> one left, true. Nicolette. You got one left. What do we want to roll on with me? Um, I'm not going to smoke. I just had it out there to look at it. Um, yeah, the thing is, commercials are usually other people advertising their products on the, the content. I'm going to do that. But I also have, again, I have 10 verticals to advertise on my own. So like, why not be the television network, have the content, and have the companies that are promoting? And I could also judge my success based on um, how many people are buying the products while they're watching my content. You know, I just got to keep the content compelling where they stay there. And uh, while they're there, they should be spending. Hey, man, let AD hit that thing and let's do another hour. <laughs> <laughs> AD don't smoke. I ain't never smoke. Ain't never. Not one day. One day. I mean, you know, different it, path. One day, so man. He's cl- on. He got to be clear. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing, I, I might not smoke if I wasn't like doing 10 things and funding independently and as, you know, confident as I am. But like me personally with the smoke is in the individuals because I believe you can smoke and still be extremely proactive. Uh, That's you me. clearly yeah, show it. Just... Snoop Dogg as well. Like, I can't. <laughs> it takes a minute. I'll fall apart. That depends. Like when yeah. I used to hustle, I couldn't smoke. See, that's when what I, was, I understand. When I was, when I was like, when I wasn't confident about th- certain things, smoking would make me think about the things that bothered me, and would make me paranoid. But I don't know, man. It's almost like when I when I used to box, the, the butterflies, regardless of whether you knew you were going to win or lose, in the beginning, I used to, I used to get these butterflies that would be crippling. And what, I, what class was you in? I didn't even know you boxed. Yeah. I'll show you the last person I fought was Andre Bird. Almost knocked his ass out. <laughs> and, and, and I show it to you. He's like too little, but um, yeah. Uh, uh, what are we talking about with the boxing? Why do we talk about boxing? I'm talking about weed. I'm talking about weed. Yeah, and being How you get proactive. Butterflies before oh, the thing. Yeah, yeah, so I used to get these crazy butterflies before I get in the, the ring, and then like. I just figured out how not to be scared before I fight, like not to have those butterflies. 
It wasn't a scared thing. It was just what my body used to do because I, I would never really, I, I would know I would win, but it's just always that chance you could get caught. But then I just figured out how not to even have butterflies before I get in the ring. I don't get really nervous before things no more. Do you still box every once in a while, go I to the gym? I, yeah, my, I got a bag. In any house that I have, there's a bag, a speed bag, a heavy bag. That's cool. Um, you know, there's always a, a, a you know jump rope. I always have a, I always have a, a boxing gym. The hand pads and shit like that. that you could just hit them. Um, yeah, Tarva, Antonio Tarva was at my crib the other day, and he he was bugging out because I have like a peanut speed bag, and I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Your hands are EA for everyone. They were. I'm 52 now. Because you still oh, have hey. the you have the technique, so I've never taken boxing. So if I, not I, that we would, but you I, probably I, I destroy you. Yeah, destroy Speaking me. Speaking, I of should destroy you. Unless you no, no, you you destroy me. But if you don't have boxing. if you don't have yeah if you don't have like you know what I mean it's like but yeah. you know you never know that wild punch could catch me. A, Ad thinks he can beat up anyone that's smaller than him, no matter what their martial arts or no, fighting background. That's not is. what we said. Including so we, Bruce Lee. What we he said, said he can whoop Bruce Lee's I'll little beat ass. Shit out of Bruce Lee. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think about that crazy ass bullshit? <laughs> I never, I never he seen said, him fight. He <laughs> said anybody smaller. No, what we was talking about, what we was talking about, because you know this is like a funny show. Uh, we was talking about people fighting people that's 130 pounds. I was like, dude, I'm 240. He said, no 130 I'm pounder like, on earth can beat him. What are they gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of true. <laughs> Once I grab him, what are they gonna do? What is Bruce Lee gonna do? He's nah. gonna fight his way out of this. Hell yeah, yeah. About to kick you, know, you with the back. He's of his gonna heal. You karate watch. shop your heart. You know. <laughs> you guys watch too many. Movies. <laughs> he only needs one inch. You guys watch too many movies, man. Shit. Real fighting ain't like that. Well, I had to fight every day. Oh no! <laughs> I did. You weren't fighting the MMA fighters. I don't know. The thing about fighting is, if you, you think there's a chance that you're gonna lose, you already lost. So you're supposed to think you could beat anybody yeah. until you lose. Where is Bruce Lee right now? Like, like <laughs> rolling in his grave, my man. Rolling He's in lucky. his fucking grave. I, I, I'd be like, yo, you just gotta show me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I maybe mean, win, you win, but you, I gotta see it for myself. And Rockefeller, did you guys ever have to fight? Did you ever have to beat up Jay Z? <laughs> Look, oh, here we go. <laughs> we stepped into it. No, no, no. I never. We we never really argued. I would I would fight. Like there would be times if like. Cause he used to come in the gym. If somebody hit him too hard, I get in there and punish him. I punish whoever hit him. Yeah, but um, no, I never, I never had a. We never. That's what I'm saying. Him and I never argued. So it just all of a sudden just fell apart. Yeah, that's the biggest. I was like, what the? F I mean, obviously, he, I guess he held a lot of things that bothered him, but I didn't know. I think he just made a move on me. That's all. It was just he just made a move on me. It was more Damn. business than anything. And it was like you know, when you make a move on your brother. And your brother was not going to hit you. And, you know, that's the only... He was the only person that could make a move on me. So when, like, Steve and Leon and all of them were, like, telling them what to do, like, why would you split it with three people when you could do it on your own? But that's fine. It, was just, it didn't have to be a beef. But they wanted it to be like that because they wanted me out of business completely. So the, the narrative was that we were fighting, but we were, we were never fighting. But it seemed like, for me, at least on, you know, where I stand and who knows where that is, but it just seemed like... You had you fought all the corporate battles for Rockefeller. I know that's so what was Jay could still interact with them. So you had to be the big guy. Yeah, I, we you played, had to be the bully. We played good cop, bad cop. There you go. And then he—that's what I'm saying. So that's why I don't respect it. But it is what it is. You know, you see, grew a bunch of horns out of his head. So it is what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> he looks it like Basquiat now. No, I don't get into all that. But I'm just saying, it's just like you know, he, that wasn't the guy I knew. So the guy, I never thought he could do some shit like that. I, I, I really thought our brotherhood was was more. I didn't think there was a dollar amount. Yeah, I've been betrayed like that before. It's a, it's a human thing. I don't even take it personal. It's just you know I don't expect anybody to be as thorough as me. You know, I, I don't I don't expect someone to have. What did I say the other day that I liked? I was like, to, I don't expect people to reciprocate the, my thoroughness. I don't think there's people that are cut from the cloth that I'm from. Um, he's from Brooklyn, so in Brooklyn they rob the plug. They don't work. With <laughs> it's like crazy. I remember I'd be like, "Why y'all robbing these things?" I'd be like, they, they, "Don't y'all work with them?" Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is how it is. So you know, it is what it is. A few more questions. Y'all got anything? Um, so from your time of touring, what was the most fucked up situation that you ever encountered? 
Since that is the program here. The most fucked up shit. Touring? Touring or your time, you know, more like when you were doing all your thing with Rockefellers, traveling and all that. What's the most fucked up shit you've ever seen? Ever. (laughs) In the history of your life. That I've ever seen? Ever. Experience? Part of. Not being. Well, just seeing people get killed. Like seeing a bullet go into somebody's head and it, it swell up with no blood. Mm. Watching life just, you know, leave a man. That shit is fucked up. Or going to a a, 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 a wake. The most fucked up shit was Aaliyah dying. That was mm. the most fucked up shit. You know, the shit I had to deal with with that. You'd be surprised how people act when they think you're hurt. That's when they really start trying to make moves on you. But um, That's when they try to make moves on you? Mm. That's terrible. You remember that when I'm, the, 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 like... That time I was beefing in Def Jam and shit, uh, like when I was, uh, they got that tape of me flipping on Kevin Lyles and right. The reason why they, they had tried to that meeting, not that wasn't Aaliyah, but my Big's brother Bobby had Bobby, um, Bobby Burt, uh, Bob Law had got killed, and we were all at the wake the day before. Mm-hmm. So you know, I was like one of my first brothers that got. You know, that was one of the first times we ever dealt with no shit like that. And that's when they made that meeting. They said they sent the email knowing we was all at the wake. And they made that meeting to do some shit behind my back. So that's when they go. And, you know, business is ruthless like that. Life is ruthless like that. Mm. So, you know, I don't have no, I'm not like, you know, I'm like not butthurt about it. I just be like, all right, now I'm going to torture you. And that's, what, that's the reason why they got to click up to get at me. For the Leah situation, were you supposed to be at the video shoot? I wasn't. What happened was I was I was at, we were both, they were doing it in Miami. And I went to um, state property. The funny thing is Freeway, she loved Freeway's records the most. Like, she, that was her favorite artist. So I had them out there in the house making an album or a record together. And uh, so I flew out there with my kids so that I could have, bring Leah to make the record. So I was out there, and then, um, you know, she made the record with Hype. I mean, the, the video with Hype. And I had just made, like, Big Pimpin' with Hype, so I knew what he was about. And I told her, I went to the video and was like, don't have him tell you that you need to go someplace else to shoot the video. Because he just does that so he could skip. You know, he did it with us. And sure enough, oh, Hype wants to go to this place. And I was telling her, I knew, I told you he was going to do that. So I told her, like, I, I didn't want her to go. And, and that's kind of fucked up because that was one of the reasons why she was in such a rush to get back. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, and it was crazy because that was, like, the one time her mother had got, like, a, a operation on her eye so she couldn't fly. Her brother was in Australia for some reason. So it was, like, the one of the rare times she was ever alone or not with her, like, team like that. And even when she got on the plane, she didn't like the plane. So, like, the last one of our last texts before she went there because she couldn't text from there. And it was the uh, Blackberry at the time was, I don't like the plane. And I, and I literally was like, don't get Damn. on it. I literally was like, don't get on it. But it was like, she, we were squashed. She, it's a long story, but I don't even feel like getting into it. But, yeah. yeah. No, no worries. No, no, just shit I can't, I don't even, not even that part, but just that's what it was. Like, she knew that plane was fucked up, but she got on it. She was always scared of planes. How'd y'all meet? How do we meet romantically or how do we meet like at first? Either, both. Well, I first met her like a basketball game, but I wasn't really looking at her like that. She was like, you know, sort of like Nicolette, like a little boy to me. You know what I mean? Because she had the, the big, the big. The big <laughs> Nicolette, she took offense to that. No, she did <laughs> I was trying to get the narrative out for you. I don't know what you want that narrative. That's what I'm saying. I be wanting to. <laughs> like, you gonna be? A, are you a lesbian or are you not? Like, what are you doing right now? You know what I'm saying? What, what are we appealing to? So you know, um, I didn't look at her like that because she was like a tomboy. I, she was little to me. But then one time, I uh, she was. Uh, I guess we had the same bookkeeper, and I walked past. And the thing about Aaliyah was like every time I saw her, she looked different. So she had different looks every time, and I was like, who the fuck is that? And I realized it was Aaliyah, and then I just threw my A game. And then, you know, I guess Jay was trying to get at her as well, and I didn't know. And then, I was, and then she, like, it got brought up, and I was like, fuck both of y'all. And, but it never worked out for them, and we were both, like, trying to get at her. I, like, kind of eased up, but then we ran into each other. It's a long story. 
<laughs> so you and Jay was both getting at Aaliyah. Obviously, everybody was getting out. at everybody was getting at Aaliyah, bro. Right. She was like, she was like, you know, she'll go to dinner with a nigga, but she wasn't going to just be smashing. So that was like the big deal, like who could get with Aaliyah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So all put, like, was he bitter? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he felt the way. The true reason of Rockefeller's breakup. But that's everybody knows that shit. Uh, like we were both like we were both. I heard it, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, but what they be trying to act like he was like really fucking with now. He was sending flowers and doing all the shit that nigga. He was courting her, so we were both going hard, and we right. and we ended up in the same house for Fourth of July. So we were, for some reason this this day. Wait I a minute, you Jay and Aaliyah ended up in the same house. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, so it was like one day it might lean toward him and then it would lean toward me, but I was just. I was just on fire that week. Like I was just everything, <laughs> everything I was saying was funny. You know what I'm saying? It was like, and I remember coming downstairs. Like you know, it happened. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> said, you know, this is going to be hard for me because he was like, because he was throwing because you know because like you know his friends were laughing at him and shit. So. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Shoot, we ended on Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. Huh? Well. I might have a fucked up question since we're talking about Aaliyah <laughs> and, and ignore me up. if it's too much, but do you have any opinion on the Art Kelly situation? Do you think he got railroaded or he he's there, he's where he belongs? Um, yeah, I think he's where he belongs. I mean, I, I you know, I know Aaliyah, so I know what he did. Oh. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, like, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't be objective about that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, he was, he was, he definitely seemed like he needed some help. You ever have beef with R. Kelly while you was with Aaliyah? Did you ever hang on to no shit or get weird? Or? Nah, she had asked me to leave it alone completely. So she never really wanted to tell me. It was like things I'd be like, yo, you know, she she just was just leave it alone. She just wanted it left alone. So that's the thing that people would be like when Jay, when Jay was doing videos with him, I was being the video, but she, I'd be like, yo, if, what do you want me to do? And she's like, don't start nothing. Just don't be in no shots with him. So I would never, you, you show me a picture of me in a picture with him and shit. Mm-hmm. And then when he, when he did the record with a, uh, with him, with Jay, that's why I was kind of, that was almost like one of the things where I was just like, he's out of here, Jay. I just let it go. Cause I couldn't believe he did a project with her, with, um, R. Kelly knowing that he had raped my girl. You know what Damn. I'm saying? So I was like, I didn't want no, I didn't want, I didn't, if you look at it, like I'm not on there as an executive producer and like he had done some bullshit before, like he wanted to get out of Rockefeller with us, but we had this OG named Deuce that, you know, he, he didn't want to, cause he didn't want us to work with Biggs no more. He, he was like, we could cut Biggs. And I was like, I can't cut Biggs. Like we could do something different, but Rockefeller's us three. And, um, or well, then he wanted me and Biggs to take less money. And I was like, I'm not taking less money. So it was a problem about a year before that, and then our, our OG uh, Deuce from St. Kicks or St. Croix kind of straightened it out, and then he died. Mm. And then like a year later, and him and Biggs didn't speak for like a year. Nobody knew. It was really him and Biggs that had the problem. I mean, Jay and Biggs. Yeah, and it's so funny because Biggs is up under him now, but um, yeah, it was really Jay and Biggs that had the problem. Like they had the beef. You know what I mean? Like I was, I was always just like, let's just be friends. Like I just want to be brothers. You know, that's all I wanted was just to be cool. And um, yeah. So I forgot what I was going. What was I talking about? Now we were just talking about uh, Jay Z doing the album with uh, Oh R. Kelly. Kelly with yeah. R. Yeah, so, Kelly, so, even though he knew well, that what happened. I got to it. Aaliyah. So one of the things that to squash the beef. Also, I was like, well, and either way, I was like, well. I'm not, just don't put my name on that. I don't want no money from that. If it is, put it to a Leah Foundation. So I never, and it, like they did this shit twice. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. went on the run. It's like. What's crazy is that. It was just flagrant. He was right, to be honest, because R. Kelly, once the shit came out on R. Kelly, Jay-Z fled the scene. Well, they, that whole situation, he just disappeared. At least from where I was. Yeah, whatever. But the point was, he knew all the time. So uh, I, didn't they I just, say like, Fiesta was shot on Epstein Island or some shit? No, nah, no, it wasn't. You know, I just be scrolling Instagram, <laughs> yeah. Facebook. That's not on New York Times, but it's on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. I saw it on the gram. <laughs> it, it, it depends how you want to look. How you want to? How smart you want to look? <laughs> I would. I would. I would. I would be a. Uh, Conscious and cognizant of where, where y'all I, shoot Fiesta. Where I get my information, I forgot. I wasn't wasn't on no island. 
Uh, it wasn't the same uh, time. Just checking. Yeah, yeah. Just checking. Yeah. Tiger Facebook groups Fiesta about it. Safe. <laughs> wow. I mean, they would say some shit like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I never, I never, I never came across the Epstein dude. Okay. Did you come across the so you East Coast all that? Uh, you ever around Biggie in the studio? Of course, he said my name. We we were close. Okay. Big, you know, say my name. I make him dash like Dane. Yeah. Yeah, he was cool as fuck. He was supposed to come with us. He was going to come with us. The commission was supposed to be MJ, and we were going to figure out which girl it was going to be. So he was going to do this double album, then do a triple album and be out of his contract, and then come with us. Oh, what wow. could have been? Yeah, you know, y'all asking some questions. I, I can't smoke in here? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, go on. Go on. We oh, got they, you. And, yes. Now oh, we hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's the herbs. The herbs. Specializing herbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know, we got to make the mushroom pills. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. I forgot. I was going to ask you if you fucking Like magic mushrooms? I've been booming. Come on, man. I'm the one that got them legal, I think. <laughs> 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 I made that shit a thing out here. See, yeah, I mean, it is le- a thing for le- sure. It's legal in California and Denver now, right? Yeah, fair, yeah. It's legal here? Yeah, it just got passed like maybe a couple weeks if ago. If it wasn't legal here, I wouldn't be answering questions about it here. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, shroom. So you microdose or you go real deep into it? How you like to get into your shrooms? Three grams. Depending on the day. Three grams. Three yeah. grams? It's like you can at eat, a time? If you can yeah, if you microdose, I don't really feel like that, but like the other day I was in San Francisco and we went to like the cookies. It was just black owned and the dude that was throwing his cousin owned it. And it was giving me all this weed. And I was like, what about the, what about the, y'all booming? Y'all got mushrooms? I went to the back and got a bunch of chocolates and jelly. So I got excited, I took two chocolates. And then I wanted to taste the jelly beans, with the jellies, because they never really affect me. But they were stuck together. So I ended up being like three thinking they were one. <laughs> and I had to teach a class. <laughs> <laughs> and them shits, and I had to do an autograph signing. So during the autograph signing, while someone was, you know, usually I just sign my name, but they were like very like, you know, wanted me to spell the name, and it was like uppercase T, lowercase H, uppercase E, like one of those, and it just, <laughs> I was like, oh my god! And then they were like, you know, you got to do like a, I thought it would be like a Q and A, but it was like, nah, it was like almost like a vagina monologues for two hours where I just sat there and talked. And, uh, so. Yeah, that's that, that happened the day before yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you take too I'm like, why would y'all take me to the drug spot before I go do a talk? <laughs> I like I like actual shrooms better than the bars and shit though. They it's just always taste like, disgusting though. Yeah, I know they do. But that's what I was doing before they started to get good with them. We, we always, always had like a bad. up in the air when you get the bars. You know what I mean? Like how much you is really in each little. Well, yeah, square. you gotta know. You gotta know the person. You know what I mean? And it's like you this gotta one, know the person. Might be some fentanyl in this one. I don't know. That's, that's why I said you got to know it. But they put fentanyl in weed. That's why you got to know the people doing it. I don't, be, I don't buy no weed from nobody I don't know. It's very rare. Actually, yeah. The weed and I dispensaries? Got, I don't usually do the dispensary. No? Street I pharmacist. I don't like dispensary weed. But it might be in the dispensary, the weed I get, but I don't get it in that variation. Okay. Like, what am I going to do, buy a little bag of weed? <laughs> what the fuck am I doing with that? So you're not... Hitting the corner store for an eighth. That's what you're saying. No. <laughs> no time for the eighth. What am I do? What am I do with the eighth? Roll three joints. So what the fuck am I? I'll be back in a week. I'll be back in fucking three three hours. You know what I mean? Well, thank you, Dame, for joining us in the podcast. Absolutely, man. Uh, if you have a chance, go watch the Prince of Detroit. It's out now, and well, it's gonna it was, be on Tubi. It was no, 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 no. no? It was in the, it was in theaters. I think it's out the theaters today. Was the last day or yesterday? And the next thing, you'll be on my streaming service. Okay. And then it might end up on Tubi. What's your streaming service so we know? America New. America New. I'm going to launch that like August 7th. But that's what I'll launch it with. I'll launch it with the movie. And I got a couple other new... I got about 50 new movies plus the old ones. You got 50 new movies coming out? That I distribute. Oh, okay. That you distribute. Yeah, I didn't make 50. Hey, man, we're trying to shoot a movie this summer. What's up, Alejandro? Shoot your shot, bro. Why try? Shoot your shot. (laughs) You with the money, man. I could do it. Hey, there's a script already written. I made a, a, for 300,000, I made a a theatrical movie, man. It's not a fucking game, three, four hundred thousand. Like, that's that's not easy, but it's easy for me because I could really do, I could really, I really make movies. I'm I'm really a director as well as a producer. 
I love it. So if you want to make a movie, it's not a try. You got cameras. You know, I did this before. You, if you got cameras and sound, and you got a, <laughs> well, we, we, you got that. Andro, he a cameraman. Cameraman out of this world. You're, so you're, a, D, so. you're a DP? More of a director. But, no, no, yeah. but I asked you, are you a DP? Do I DP? Yes. Yeah. So, Have I gotten paid to DP? Yeah. So but I got more of a, I consider myself more of a producer, so, so writer, you, director. So when you shoot, you're not behind the camera. You just tell the DP what to do. Well, depending on the project. Cause I'm not a DP, so I'm not judging yeah. you. Yeah. No, no. Like, right. depending on the project, because if it's more of a higher budget. Well, if, you're, if you know how to be a DP, then you don't need. And, and, and for yeah, independent, I know how to be a DP. For independent, if you know how to light it. Like, what, what lens do you like to use? Do you know about lenses? Yeah. Uh, so right now, I recently got myself some anamorphic lenses. Yeah, which ones? Uh, do you have you heard of the Laola nanomorphs? They're more on the they're newer and more on the cheaper independent side. How much they cost? Uh, the pack costs uh, around four thousand five hundred for three lenses. Four thousand for anamorphic lenses, three anamorphic. Yeah, but lenses? it's like a new type of anamorphic lens that I, has I come out to the market. I need to see how they shoot. Okay. Because I, I like to use a Cook's anamorphic lens. Oh, uh, Cook's are the best, but Cook's, you know, we they go cost, back to the $100,000. Well, that's right. Because yeah. it got to blow up. It got to look good on the yeah. screen. So what people don't understand is that it's easy for something to look good on a, a phone or a computer, but when it blows up, that shit spreads out. It gets blurry. So you have to get a lens that can hold, and the colors happen. And the anamor- I always, all my movies are shot on anamorphic because I like the way it makes the lights go wider. And I always put my shit in the letterbox. But um, yeah, if you got if you have lenses and what are these um, black magics? Yeah, yeah. And you got these black magics. You can make a movie, and you have you got a location. You got this whole thing right here. And if you're a DP, all you need is somebody to move the lights, a gaffer, and you have somebody you, that works your lens. So yeah, someone that works the lens and sound, someone to work sound. But that's all you need is people. But you don't need to buy nothing. It should cost you literally. If you're not paying a lot of actors, it shouldn't cost you more than five grand a day. And if you're doing 10 pages a day, you know, you should be done in seven days. And then the editor might cost, you know, 10, 15 grand. And then to color it and mix it, it could cost like 10, 15, 20 grand. So you could do a movie for like 100, 115,000. Got it. The job on your budgeting, it's pretty close to what you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I appreciate need, the advice. All you need is a, a you have an AD, an assistant director that you work well, with. I have friends that I can bring in, like, oh, they, a, like not a, contacts they, that I've made throughout the year. They they do I mean, do they AD. pay any AD, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But I'm just saying, if you have a friend that does it, then you can just, or if you know how to do it, you just if you know how to break the script down, you know how to break a script down. Yeah. So just break the shit down. Ten pages a day, one one location a day. Don't move around. And uh, you know, I like to have an editor on set. That's it. Ain't gonna cost that much. I love it. That's it. Shoot. That concludes our broadcast day, y'all. Give it up for Dame Dash yeah. in the house. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs>